Good afternoon. Political Paula coming to you from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Healthy. My husband and I are healthy. We're fine. Um, we will continue to be fine. And if we get the virus, I predict that we will be sick for a couple of days and be just fine as well. Then we'll have immunity to it, which is a good thing. If healthy people actually get the virus, recover from it, and build immunity to it, that will help stop the spread of the virus. you got to be exposed to it. Now, I have been attacked, and seriously attacked, for a lot of different things that I've posted on this show and on Facebook. And one of the things I am attacked for is the fact that, um, that we are getting paid. So it's my fault that I happen to marry a wonderful man who is, by the way, a veteran of the Marine Corps. And he had ambitions. And when we were poor, when we first met, and we both worked two jobs, and he was studying coding and web development and chose a profession where he can work from home and still service his customers, um, that was a good thing. It's good for us. We planned ahead. You know, it, it's great, but I'm being attacked for that. Like, I am so selfish and evil because we're not losing paycheck. Like, somehow I don't care about people who are. Well, I do care. I care very much. I care so much that I am actually, and I put on Facebook, and I got attacked for this too, that I'm going to be ordering takeout from my local restaurants who have been forced to close by Governor Tom Wolf in Pennsylvania. I'm going to order takeout from them to support them. I'm going to tip well when they deliver to my house. And then people were saying, oh, no, I wouldn't get takeout. Why not? Why would you not get takeout? Your food is not contaminated. Stop. I'm getting takeout tonight. I mean, we have been ordering Chinese food back when this was just a Chinese problem. And people were saying, don't eat at Chinese restaurants. We ordered takeout from our local Chinese restaurant because we love them. And we didn't get sick. And we're not sick. And I want to reiterate that. We are not sick. Somebody just posted on my Facebook page that we might have the first case of coronavirus in Lancaster City, at Lancaster General Hospital. I'm not surprised. They said this morning, this thing is airborne. If this thing, if this virus is airborne, you can shut yourself in your house all you want. You're going to get this virus. If you're going to get it, you're going to get it. If it's airborne, shutting people in their houses is not going to change anything. I have all my windows open right now. It's a beautiful day. I'm not afraid to go outside and breathe the air. Look. You can attack me all you want. You can say that I am upset because I can't get my liquor stores are closed. Well, you know what? I think this is kind of an interesting point that our grocery store employees are allowed to be exposed to this virus. And customers that go to grocery stores who are buying up all the toilet paper, why I don't know, that they're, they're a, if you want to go to a grocery store, that's cool. You can be exposed to this virus if you go get groceries, but you can't spend five seconds, which is all it takes for me to walk into a liquor store. Five seconds. I walk in a liquor store, I buy my two boxes of my Franja or Vela boxed white Zinvendel. I go to the checkout, I pay, I walk out. I'm in and out in literally 10 seconds on a normal day. But when Tom Wolf announced that liquor stores were closing all over Pennsylvania, on Monday night, people went crazy. You, 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 you're attacking me like I think alcohol is essential. There were 500 fucking people in the liquor stores lining up this close to each other. Not the six feet. They were going nuts, taking all the alcohol off the shelves, stocking up. So don't blame me for that. I'm not the only functioning alcoholic out here. I'm not the only one who says if we're going to be quarantined in our houses for God knows how long till the government says we're not, that we need booze. I'm not the only one who's doing that. Don't blame me.
Don't blame me because my husband's getting a paycheck. Blame your employer, your employer who might get a bailout from President Trump, from the federal government, and might not give it to you. See, that's my problem, too. If you are an hourly employee and you don't have sick days, if your employer gets money from the government, you should get that money. You hourly employees who are not allowed to go to work. While the grocery store employees who are hourly are being forced to go to work. They're being told, we don't care if you get sick or not. But you have to be there to check people out while they buy 500 cases of toilet paper. So it's okay to be exposed to the virus if you're buying groceries. And believe me, most people spend more time in a grocery store exposing people to all kinds of illnesses than they ever do in a liquor store. But liquor stores close, grocery stores open, come on in, spread your virus, and our employees, we don't give a fuck if you're exposed or not. You're essential. See, to me, booze is essential. Wine is essential for me. I haven't had a meal in three days because I've been so depressed about this virus. I will admit to you, I am afraid. But I'm afraid for a different reason than you all are afraid. I'm not afraid of getting this thing. I'm not afraid of getting the coronavirus. Because I know, like every other illness that I've ever gotten, and I haven't gotten many, that I will be fine. But I want to remind you of all the illnesses out there that are preventable that some of you refuse to vaccinate your children for. Measles, mumps, rubella. How many people say, oh, my religion, I'm religious. We don't vaccinate our children. We just pray on it. How many, we eradicated measles in our country. Now, really listen to me on this. We eradicated measles. When I was a kid, my mother got me vaccinated for everything the pediatrician said I needed vaccinated for. Now we've got measles outbreaks all over this country because certain sections of our country, certain people refuse to vaccinate, use the vaccinations that everybody's screaming for a coronavirus vaccine. Well, are we going to get the coronavirus vaccine? There are people out there who will not vaccinate their children for measles, mumps, and rubella. And because of them, some children have gotten measles and died from it. And I don't hear anybody screaming at them. People use their religious beliefs to not get medical care for their children when they're sick. They're just going to prey on it. Some children have died from strep throat. Because their parents don't believe in medicine. But we say that's fine. I've never had the flu vaccine. And I've also never had the flu. Interesting, isn't it? While most people I know who have had the flu vaccine have actually gotten the flu. Some have been very ill. Interesting, isn't it? So let's say we get this corona vaccine. Are there going to be people out there who say, I refuse to use the vaccine because my religion says it's God's will? I'm just going to pray on it? You all know me. I have no religious beliefs. I'm not using religion for anything. I don't get the flu vaccine because I don't like pharmaceutical companies and I don't like their drugs. I believe that for me personally, my risk of getting the flu is very low because I really don't go anywhere. And I never go around sick people, even before coronavirus. I've always been the kind of person who is responsible. If I'm sick, I don't go around other people. And if they're sick, I ask before I go to someone's house, is anyone sick? Because I don't want to get sick. This was before coronavirus. So think about that. Think about the fact that right now the government is coming on television telling American citizens how to wash our hands. Really? I mean, I'm 55 fucking years old. I know how to wash my fucking hands. Which is why I have just turned off my television. I am not watching the news anymore. And that's why I'm making this announcement to all of you. After today. 
I am not discussing coronavirus on this show. Unless something really crazy happens where I believe that the government is using this situation to overexert itself into our lives and our freedom as Americans. <clears throat> we have to remember back when this all started and, and President Trump said we're stopping all travel from China. That was smart. He was being impeached in the Congress. They were too busy to even think about Corona. He saw it. He said, we're stopping. The big mistake that President Trump made was allowing those Americans on that damn cruise ship. You know, those elderly retired people who have all this money to go take luxury cruises. They go well off and then they get sick and then we let them come in. Those 14 people... Believe it or not, and I've read the books and I've watched the movies and I've read the real life books, the true stories. Those 14 people that came off that cruise ship in Washington are the reason we have the coronavirus outbreak in this country right now. If they had been told to stay on that ship until they were clear of the virus, we probably would be okay. I believe that. If when we saw a first case in Europe, we had banned all travel from people coming in from Europe, whether American or not, we probably would not be in this situation right now. But please stop attacking me on Facebook. Please stop yelling at me because my husband's getting a paycheck. The reason my husband's getting a paycheck is because my husband is smart. And he worked his ass off, as I did, to get him to the point where he could have a job where, yes, he can service his customers, get a paycheck, work for a company who, who takes care of their employees. That was all my husband's choices that he made. And if you didn't make those same choices, don't blame me for that. Don't blame me because you work for McDonald's or you work for some company that pays you $11,000 a year. Don't blame me for that. And by the way, stop blaming me that I'm attacking welfare moms. I get it. This was a big surprise. So we do need to support the healthy welfare moms who think that having children is a disability and they can't feed their kids breakfast and lunch. We have to help you out. I get that. But going forward, after this is over, if it is ever over, because again, if this thing is airborne, we're going to live with this virus forever. So it ain't going to just go away. But when when, and if, we need to start making sure that, you know, if you have children, you have to feed them. Which means you might have to get, oh my God, wait for it, a job. Because that's what parents who have children usually do. They get a job to support their children that they choose to bring into this horrible, terrible, virus-infected world. So we need to look at that. That you don't depend on any government. I am so blessed right now. And yeah, you can attack me for it, but I don't need the government. I don't need the government. The government is not going to pay our bills because we can pay our own bills. Because my husband and I worked our fucking asses off. We chose not to have children we can't afford. We can afford to pay our bills. Thank God. But that's not because of any handouts we got from anybody else. So don't attack us because we've done the right thing. Don't yell at me because we've done the right thing. We didn't have kids we couldn't afford. We got ourselves out of the poverty we lived in when we first got together in 1997 in that little apartment with $40 a week for groceries. We worked our asses off to get where we are now. And where we are now is we don't need the government handouts to survive this crisis. We don't need the government. And therefore, we don't believe the government needs us. I don't owe the government any goddamn thing. I'm not sick, and I refuse to live as though I am sick. If someone wants to invite us over for a meal, invite us over. We'll be there. 
If you are healthy and you want to come to my house for a meal, you're welcome in my home. But like I always do, before coronavirus, before coronavirus, I always ask people, if you are if you are not well, if you have a cold, don't come to my house. If I have a cold, I'm not going to come to your house. I always practice these methods. And while everybody is screaming for a coronavirus vaccine, how many religious people will claim religious outages or we're religious, we're not getting the corona vaccine, and how many people will be exempt from getting it? You can't force people to get vaccines. That's why we have measles outbreaks. We have little kids dying from measles right now because people refuse to use the vaccines that are available. So if you're not worried about your kids dying from measles or getting the chicken pox, you won't get those vaccines or you won't get the Gardasil vaccine for cervical cancer because it'll turn your girls into whores because it's a sexually transmitted illness, cancer. If you won't do that, you shouldn't be worried about corona because you really don't give a shit. You think you, prayer will take care of it. So pray. Pray a lot. At the end of the day, if this thing is airborne, being shut up in your house is not going to stop you from getting this virus. And if you work in a grocery store, you've already been exposed. Y'all either going to get it and get well, or you're not going to get it and consider yourselves lucky. Every shopper who goes into the grocery store is exposed to other people who might have this virus or they might have the flu or they might have a cold. Or a kid whose parent prays a lot and doesn't have them vaccinated for measles. You could get measles walking into a grocery store. It's the way our world works. We have freedoms in this country. And we need to protect those freedoms. We need to protect our freedom to be able to shop for the goods that we feel that we need. And that includes alcohol, folks. And if it's okay for Park City Mall in Lancaster to be selling clothes and jewelry and shoes, it should be okay for the liquor stores to be selling wine and rum and vodka. That's all I'm saying. Once again, I want to announce this is my last show on coronavirus. I have turned off all the news. My husband and I are healthy. We continue to be healthy. And I expect we will stay healthy because we just don't get sick in this house. We don't. And I don't know if that's because of our great genes or the fact that we're just simply responsible. We wash our hands. We know how to do that. We don't need the nanny government coming out and saying, oh, sing happy birthday. We're good. But maybe that's part of the problem, too. Maybe America has become too clean. We don't let our children get dirty anymore. We use all these, like, special laundry detergents that are something free and this free. Maybe we need to be exposed more to chemicals and shit so our bodies can start building immunity to this crap. Maybe the reason I'm so healthy, even though I smoke a pack and a half of cigarettes a day and I drink wine like a fish, is because when I was a kid, I got dirty. I got dirty. I am actually immune to the chicken pox. I have a natural immunity to chicken pox. I've been exposed to it, never gotten it. Don't know why. Doctor didn't know why, but basically said, you're immune. My husband keeps teasing me that I'm going to live forever. And he might be right. I will tell you this. I am scared. I am scared because I see things happening in my country right now that I used to read about in books and think, not going to happen here. And now it's happening. And you all should be scared too. So I want you to share your stories with me. That's fine. But once again, this will be my last post about the coronavirus. Tomorrow I have a show for you about something completely unrelated to coronavirus. And I'm going to continue to do shows as I see fit. 
that have nothing to do with the virus because I think we all need a break. The only thing that stopped coronavirus coverage was Tom Brady announcing that he's not going to play for the New England Patriots anymore. Wow, of course, right? I think some things, if you call me selfish, some people are screaming because they can't watch basketball on TV anymore. That, to me, is a blessing because I used to hate it when TNT used to take off their regular programming for basketball. I hate basketball. So the fact that sports people can't get paid millions of dollars to throw a ball around and people can't watch, oh, we're not going to have the Kentucky Derby now until September. Oh, my God. The end of the world. Well, no, that's not the end of the world. What the end of the world is is when a liquor store employee who is paid hourly can't go to work because alcohol is not considered essential, even though in these hard times, Getting drunk is kind of a good thing, you know, hanging out with your husband, getting drunk together. That's cool. But basketball, oh, they cancel basketball. It's the end of the world. Hey, good riddance to basketball. Oh, and baseball parks. I might not have to hear fireworks at my local ballpark messing up my dog anymore because they're going to cancel that. Thank you. That makes me happy. But please remember, if you are an hourly employee and you find out that your company has gotten some kind of a federal government payout, make sure you get some of that money. Make sure that your boss who has the million bucks in the Cayman Islands or the investments all over the place, who lives in the big house with the swimming pool and the tennis courts, who's getting alcohol personally delivered to his house when you can't even get a box of wine. Make sure you get some of that money that the federal government is going to give to your employer. Because that's what that money's for. It's for you, the hourly employee, the employee who makes the big boss rich and is never appreciated. So make sure you get your fair share. But you can share your stories with me. I will certainly be here to listen and comment but like I said before I am going I'm gonna just put my head in the sand and say you know what I'm not sick my husband's not sick we're okay and I'm not going to live my life like a sick person because as I get older there will be plenty of time for sickness in my life I'm not going to allow my government to make me live like I'm sick I'm not sick. And if you're not sick, don't live like you are. I love all my viewers very much. Um, please, please stop attacking me for my attitude about this. I think at the end of the day, when this is all said and done, you might actually see that I was right. I'm not a doctor. I don't pretend to be, but I've talked to doctors. And sitting alone in your house, not letting anybody in, not seeing anybody, you still could get this virus. If it's airborne, like we believe it is, and I believe it is, it doesn't matter where you are or how shut in you are. If you're going to get it, you're going to get it. And all we can hope is that we get the mild case. Like 90% of everyone who has this virus has gotten the mild case. They don't even know they have it. And when they do get it, they recover and they're absolutely fine. And also remember this. Because I have read the books and I've seen the movies. Whatever your government is telling you, there is a hell of a lot that they're not telling you. And that's why we just all have to say, Viva. Live. Just live our lives. Because when it gets dire, the government is not going to tell us. They won't give us notice. It's just going to happen. So, every day, live every day like it's your last. That's what I've always done. And I encourage all of you to do the same. Political Paula is out.